Ladies and gentlemen, we have such a fun video today. We're gonna be just going through all the recent custom track updates on CTGP. That's gonna be the last two updates. And this first one is called the Grand Archives. It's like a library based course. And we're just gonna be playing them offline so I can not screw up too bad and just kind of get a feel for the layout of these levels. This is trickable. Yeah, and I've ran through all of these one time when they originally came out, but I don't have the layouts perfectly down, so I might get lost a little bit. Look at this. <laughs> the Goomba has a book on top of his head sideways. Lucky 2 reading a book, and I mean, this just this track has so much charm to it. It's absolutely magnificent. But look at this. We have Shy Guy painting right up against the side of the library. Beautiful nature in the background. And if you look at the mini-map, it is a little bit confusing on the layout. However, I really like how they made part of the mini-map a different color. It makes things a little bit less confusing and kind of figure out where the players actually are when you glance at it. The second half of the track is like the gray portion while the other part is white. And overall, this track is phenomenal. It goes without saying, I think CTGP has done a really good job as of recent picking tracks that stand out. Ones that have unique elements that aren't present on any other custom tracks in the pack. And this one absolutely does that. We can probably cut a big gap here doing this. Yeah, you don't want to fall to the right. That is out of balance. I remember that the first time I played. But yeah, that's the thing is like, there's so much custom scenery custom enemies and objects, so on and so forth. Oh, I thought this was a route for a second. I was looking, I was like, oh, can I go through that? I do not think so. There's probably some really cool shortcuts on this one. I, I don't know the shortcuts, like I said. I haven't watched footage of these. I have gone through them, so we know the regular route for the most part, but we're gonna be figuring out a lot out on the fly with you guys. I think it'd be fun just going through all the tracks and just trying to learn, like, what they're like going through them the first time and see, okay, this route seems pointless. I thought there'd be an item box there. I remember the first time I played this track, that route seemed impossible and slower, and sure enough, that is the case. I don't see the point in taking that route at all. Maybe there is a purpose, but I have yet to figure it out. Look at this, the ladder, and we have, is that Hammer Bro up there? Oh, that's Hammer Bro. Incredible, he's like nailing something into the wall. There's just so much action going on on this track. It's like, hard to take it all in on one run through but that's why you guys need to play this update as well and give these tracks a chance and see what you think because I mean custom tracks have really came so far I remember how simplistic they used to be and also just how much they used to incorporate elements of the 32 Nintendo tracks into them so they just kind of felt like variants of those tracks while now it's like you don't see almost a single thing on this track that is from one of the 32 Nintendos. Everything's different from the road and the enemies and the scenery on the sides, even the trees. I've never seen that tree before. It's really something special. So this is just the first of many tracks we're playing today. This one is actually one of the more simplistic ones compared to some we'll be tackling. And this is 100% my kind of track. I'm sure that's no surprise for everyone watching who knows what type of tracks I like. I like the tracks that feel more like Nintendos, and that certainly does. If you told me that was a track in Mario Kart Arcade or something, I'd be like, wow, yeah, no, that makes sense. But some of the tracks we're gonna be playing, like this next one, not so much. Way more difficult, but we wanted to start off with just a little more simplistic one, the Grand Archives. Stroben's Desert Illusion. Oh my. Yeah, so the first time I played this one, it actually uh, evoked some nostalgia because I have played the original Strowman's Desert many times back in the day. So this beginning section is extremely familiar to me. And oh, maybe there's something off to the side on the left there. There could be a shortcut over there. I'm not sure. Oh, that's really sliding. Try to do a little mini shortcut there, paid the price. But anyway, right when you go through this portal, the track turns into something completely brand new and it kind of mixes Stroben's Desert with this other old school illusion based custom track that I can't remember the name of. And we have the Tumbling Shy Guys. This reminds me of like Super Smash Bros Brawl with the Shy Guys that are flying over figure eight circuit. <laughs> I think it might be called Mario Circuit on the stage. 
And yeah, I mean, the Shy Guy, like, <laughs> Shy Guy, he's a character that's in all the Mario Kart games nowadays, like, the recent ones. However, his original appearance was not, not the case at all. He actually was in Mario Kart DS as a downloadable content, like, exclusive character. This is a trippy section, by the way. So, Shy Guy just ended up being, like, a character you can only play if one person had Mario Kart DS inserted and everyone else was on DS Download Play. They had to be on Shy Guy. They only had the first two cups available. And I believe it was playing Shy Guy on the standard cart, just like this track shows. So we got some some, some more nostalgia in more ways than one, not only with Strobe Desert, but the Shy Guys tumbling on the standard cart, attacking us. Got a tornado here, this is pretty terrifying. Oh, okay, I do not know what happens if I hit that. I don't think I want to find out. And okay, that was one lap on this. It's actually not too bad. It's gonna be like a three minute track or so. And looks like there's another route on the left, which I have completely missed. We see one of the CPUs going for it. But my favorite part of the track is this section right here. This whole downhill part is just absolutely gorgeous. And then I really like how before you go off the ramp, you can get a gauge of where the tumbling shy guys are. Now we're tricking onto these abandoned, broken buildings. I mean, it almost feels like I'm in the movie Inception. And then this part right here reminds me of that Illusion custom track I was talking about from back in the day. Let's use our mushroom in the most inopportune spot so we can take this route and see what this has to offer. I think these, uh, these zippers are magnificent. And oh, it looks like we are on the top route this time. Absolutely gorgeous. Seriously, gorgeous track. And as you can tell, even though it's a complicated custom track, it's really not that confusing. It's it's actually pretty playable. You can figure out where to go. These arrows are much appreciated. Same with this one. And there's nowhere on this level where I felt like I would get lost. This part at the end is maybe a little bit confusing, but you just go straight, so it's not too bad. And this kind of feels like Rainbow Road on the anti-gravity turn. I'm very curious about this tornado. Let's see what happens if I hit the side. Okay, so hitbox is pretty favorable. And that's Stroben's Desert Illusion. Anyone playing this track for the first time, they're gonna see the beginning and be like, oh, okay, it's a desert track. And then immediately their mind is gonna be completely blown. Blissful block, we have the shine from Mario Sunshine. And there's a sign pointing to Cannon City. I see more Sunshine references, but this is not Delfino Plaza. A little bit different. And, oh, I remember this one. Every single lap is different, just like you can see on the mini-map. So, uh, might get lost on this one. Like I said, I have played all the tracks. But it's pretty hard to get them down just playing them once when there's multiple different routes. I kind of feel the same way when I would play the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe like DLC City tracks. Very similar feeling. This is not trickable. All right, and it seems like this first lap is shorter than the rest. We're just gonna keep following this. Almost feels like Green Hill Zone from Sonic. Oh, we're hitting the wall. We're kind of in no man's land. I don't know where I am now. This track's a little confusing. The last one, even though seemingly more complicated, I mean, visually, is much less confusing than this one. I'm, I'm definitely lost right now, but I'm following the CPUs. I'm following the arrows. And I think we're gonna be okay. I think we're almost done here. Yeah, we're almost done with lap one. So that's good. And we'll get some more items. And we're pretty much at the end here. Okay, so that, that's not that bad. Lap one, not too bad. Got a little confused at one part. I think I just missed like a shortcut or a top route or something. Flew down to the bottom and hit that building. So let's hope that doesn't happen again. I think we're gonna be taking an entirely different route this way. Uh, this time anyway, so. I mean, visually it's a pretty cool track really creative city track just reminds me of the mario kart tour ones but more complicated and oh there's a shortcut on the right 100 percent it looks like it's a small shortcut just kind of leads you out over here lots of cars you have to evade gonna be a little bit difficult to find out the layout of them and can we go up here oh there's a hidden shortcut potentially oh, almost and you can go up here too. Okay, and you can trick off this. Yeah, there, there's a lot of different strats on this one. Uh, we have two different options here. You can see I'm a little more lost on this one, <laughs> trying to figure out on the fly. Uh, yeah, we're going the right way though. We're going the right way. I don't think I took the fastest way. Definitely some faster strats than what I did, but totally different route from lap one. 
And I believe lap three is gonna be the longest. Let's see which direction it takes us this time. It's gonna take us through the middle. Yeah, we're going through the middle this time. Okay, and there's some Goombas and some boulders flying. They're actually flying into the wall, so it looks like you have two options there. One where you have to dodge boulders, but if you pick the left route, you just get to evade them all together because they just go straight into the wall, which is nice. And then we're actually back on the same route that we took on lap two here. And got a little bit of a break away from the CPUs. You can just relax for a moment. That This is really slidey here. You gotta be careful. And oh, this, this part of the track is really nice. Can you trick off the boats? You can drive on the boats, but I don't think you can trick off of them. I'm not sure if there's any purpose for going off the boats. There could be some sort of shortcut there, though. Feels a little suspicious. The fact you can drive on the boats at all makes me think there is some utility to the boats. And now we're on a windy, curvy section, and it just leads straight into the finish line. So uh, ends up being what seems to be like a longer route at the beginning and then a quick route on the end. So that that's a really cool track, just a little bit confusing. I'd say it's my least favorite out of the three, but still very creative, and I'm sure I'll like it more as time goes on. This one is so pretty, wow. All right, Cryo Volcano. Let's see what's in store for us here. Don't remember this one too well. I'm sure it'll come back to me though. Wow. Gorgeous. I mean, all the tracks, like I said, they feel completely unique from one another. And that is something that I know CTGP has tried to be consistent with over the last like year or two of updates. Just not having tracks feel too similar. Feel like their own unique custom tracks where there's nothing that feels like it at all. And I could already tell you that's the case with every single one we've played today. Very creative tracks. I don't know, I guess you just keep going down. Oh, you just keep going down, cool. Okay, and then a trick here and just keep going straight. So th this section, even though it looks a little confusing, all you do is you keep going straight, that's it. And then you get low tricks automatically. Oh, 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 we're, we're living, we're living. We almost fell off, but we're good. Whoa. That was already a lap. Is it gonna be different on lap two and three? I feel like it's gonna be different, I'm not sure. That actually went pretty fast. Like I made some big mistakes and it ended up not being too long. I'm used to a lot of these custom tracks being extremely long. Gotta love the uh, the ancient columns on the side. And then, oh yeah, no, the track totally changes here with the coloring. Wow, it's all like frozen over now. Oh my gosh, it's like a completely different track. And we can drive down here, although, <laughs> the penguin is driving faster than us. That's not a good sign. This is so cool. The, uh, this is beautiful. And looks like there's another route on the left over there, probably faster than what I'm doing. Yeah, this catacomb is gonna take me out. Let me get a good item now. Oh, it's taking me out again! Oh no, that's three times! Chill. Okay, good. <laughs> Just had to say chill and it worked. That's all you gotta do sometimes. Speak to the Cataclax and they will respect you. So I'm in 10th place now against CPUs. And I'm curious to see if, um, <laughs> if it's gonna be any different than lap two. Probably not, I mean, that was a drastic change from lap one to lap two. But let's see what this cryo volcano has in store for us. This is one of the coolest parts of the level, just the camera angle you get. And maybe we can see if we can oh, discover the other route. Yeah, we go up here, we can trick off this, and then trick off this, and then go to the side, and then trick off this. And then yeah, we actually ended up taking the other route. This is what I wanted to show you guys last lap. We did figure it out. And I mean, this is really cool very well designed. I really am impressed by this one. And I'm just gonna barely beat King Boo. This, this one's awesome. I mean, it drastically changes. It's not like Grown Volcano where certain parts of the level fall and that's just a slight change making the track more difficult. It's like this track had a whole visual overhaul in the middle of the entire race. This next one is called Cosmic Grove. And I believe it was added a couple updates ago and then it got like a new version on the most recent update. We are entering the mouth of some monster, and then there's gonna be a lot of purple on this track. That's what I remember. I played this one twice, I think. And there's a mushroom section at the end, it appears. We're entering the monster, and then we have some Bowser Castle-esque wavy road, and entering this uh, mysterious crystal-esque cave. Okay, beautiful, beautiful textures, very bright and vivid, love that. 
Gotta appreciate the red arrows, of course. And then now we're on like a Koopa Cape-esque water stream here. There's some sort of skull and bone sign that was to the left, probably telling you not to take a certain route. Oh, that's a little bit of a blind corner. You gotta be really careful there. Almost fell off, ended up hitting some off-road though. And here is the mushroom section at the end, okay. Definitely a couple shortcut routes. I'm looking at the mini map and it appears that you can do something off to the side there at the end of the level. And yeah, uh, just right here, you gotta make sure you go around this corner. But yeah, uh, not too long, not too complicated. Only one or two minor confusing parts. And yeah, I mean, these custom tracks, they all look so vastly different from one another. What happens here? Okay, it counts you out. You might be able to jump over that with a mushroom. I was curious, I had to test that. And this is actually one of the main reasons like we're playing these tracks against CPUs. Like I wanna be able to test things and I wanna, like when my mind gets curious, I don't wanna be happy like, to risk it mid online race. And let's see, I wanna try over here now. Can we land up top? Oh, yes you can. If you got a mushroom, you could 100% land up top. And then it looks like it's a shortcut, which is gonna lead you down here towards the beginning, so you're pretty much finishing the lap inside the shortcut, like mid shortcut, which is really cool. So uh, yeah, I mean, overall, another great track. And what's good about CTGP is they're actually getting rid of a lot of the older tracks that have been around forever. And these new tracks definitely are levels above some of the ones removed. Like I know that Halado Mountain and I believe Niswo Desert got removed. Uh, the tracks replacing were this one and then like, you know, Strobent's Desert Illusion. So some really good choices there. And I think that's super important considering like how custom tracks have just improved exponentially over the last couple years. I think it's really important that we get these new designs in and uh, just show the world like how far custom tracks have came in the Mario Kart community. I mean, this is some incredible stuff right here. This is one of the most visually striking tracks. I mean, I played this one right after Christmas, I believe is when it came out. And it's a little bit overscaled. The mini map is tiny. It's kind of hard to even really get much use out of it when you're racing. I remember that. But you guys are in for a treat with this one. There's one section of the track where I got to it and I was just like, oh my gosh, like this is Mario Kart Wii. I'm playing Mario Kart Wii right now. This looks better than half the booster course pass tracks. So uh, one thing I want to point out is uh, th this looks like a potential shortcut like right here. I mean, like, I'm gonna fall off right here, but never mind. That's not a shortcut. It counted me out of bounds immediately. It just looked like a giant shortcut. And these custom tracks, especially the non retros, they usually have crazy shortcuts. So you always gotta be the lookout on the lookout for them. And the best thing to do is to go to the Ghost database on CTGP. And from there, you can download the world records and you can see all of the fastest strategies. That's the best way to learn all of the shortcuts for all of these brand new custom tracks that are so visually complicated and extremely detailed that it's pretty hard to find everything yourself. So that's the best way. The community collaborative effort is the way to go. We can go up here, is this, this off-road? Oh, this is off-road. Okay, I couldn't tell, it looks pretty similar to Ray. So uh, we're gonna keep going and we're actually getting really close to the part of the level I was talking about before, right here. You shoot up and you enter this airship and there's even one more part of the level that's even more incredible that we're getting to. We just gotta go around here. Uh, King Boo is on a mission. I'm getting wrecked right now. This is actually quite funny. Look at this! Isn't that insane? It's like we're entering a whole different world. Like, what is this from? There's definitely lots of shortcut potential here. There's some lasers you have to evade. And we're going uphill now. Just getting, oh, oh, there's a shortcut right here for sure. You can jump over that. <laughs> I tried to do a trimless, that was really stupid. But uh, yeah, big shortcut there. You can even cut off this, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Figuring it out, I mean, it's just such a beautiful track. Every part of it. We're in like a sanctuary right now. We went on top of the airship. I, I don't know what game this is from. It's called Castle in the Sky, I mean, what is that from? Is this from like an anime or a movie? Maybe. Is it from like a Miyazaki film or something? Like, I don't know. That's that's what it feels like. But I'm just guessing. It just has a familiar feel to it. And I can't quite pinpoint what it is. But I'm sure you guys know in the comment section. 
platform section. But once again, this is incredibly clear on where to go. So the arrows, even though it had a confusing like layout to it and route, whoa, that's the end. Oh my gosh, look at that massive crystal in the center. It looks like uh, the crystal from the Sims games. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, the red arrows everywhere really helped on that platform section that has no railings anywhere. I mean, I was afraid I was gonna get lost and mess up and lose to King Boo, but we found our way. It's actually an amazing track. This is one of my favorites for sure. Bowser Jr.'s Crafty Castle. Paper Mario themed track. Beautiful, and look at them. They're all in jail. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks phenomenal. Really fits Mario Kart Wii, very bright and colorful. Like this game, is very cartoony and that's kind of like what they did with the booster course pass like the original Mario Kart 8 tried to be like more realistic with the textures and darker if anything you look at like Mario Kart Stadium compared to like some of the retro circuit tracks very different vibe where to get triple mushrooms here and just keep going straight try to remember this track okay oh there looks like there's a shortcut right here let's use a mushroom yeah oh and it leads to a boost trick ramp and then uh, if you trick here, you gotta be careful. You wanna get almost a bad landing so you don't shoot into the wall. All right. There is something over here too. So this part is a very very confusing part. You can't trick through this. Even though it looks like you can, you cannot. You have to trick off the side of this. It's a very interesting design choice. A little bit misleading for sure, but that is something to know when you're playing this track. So you don't just trick into the wall and lose five plus seconds. And there's another shortcut right here, beautiful. And then uh, Bowser Jr. has a uh, fiery inferno right in front of us. And I believe there's another strategy over here somewhere. Let's just keep going. I'm trying to remember everything this track has to offer. <laughs> the paper cutout Goombas are next level. And yeah, I mean, it's a very smooth track. The one thing that's interesting is even though it doesn't feel like a complicated track, it is pretty long. It's over a minute per lap. And I think we're on a different route here. We can go up here, right? And we use our mushroom shortcut. Oh, this is a cool one. Okay. Yeah, I was looking at the mini map. I was like, we're on a completely different route here. And I just remembered about that shortcut. But yeah, um, surprisingly, a really long track for how simplistic it is. Usually the long tracks are always the most complicated ones or the, like the one lap tracks. But this one, fairly simple not too many enemies and obstacles that you have to evade on the level i think the most difficult part is probably like right here when you have to evade some stuff and fire you got to make sure you're cautious and wary of it but yeah otherwise it you know it has a pretty wide road not too difficult of corners the goombas don't even move they just kind of like bobble back and forth so that's not too difficult to deal with and yeah i mean this is this is a great track it doesn't have any arrows, which is interesting. I guess it doesn't really need them. There's only maybe one or two parts where I feel like it could benefit from, from an arrow. Uh, I think this part's a little bit dark and a little bit confusing. Is this off-road over here? No, see, this is an off-road. It's just a little bit sliding, but it's not off-road, so it, it's fine. It doesn't matter because at least the walls are a lot brighter than the road. Makes it very clear where they are. And then we're back to this room. We've got lots of dry bones, paper dry bones on the side love that of course and some really cool like trick animations when you trick i don't know how the custom track creators do that but that's a really nice touch like the item boxes are often different on custom tracks which is always pleasant a pleasant surprise and then uh the trick animations being different sometimes they have the pow animation or the blooper animation being different and then occasionally we even have like a different colored lightning bolt when the shock hits so uh yeah that one's one of my favorites it's uh perfect for ctgp i think it offers something for everyone frantic Fun yard. Such a cool design for a custom track. I always love tracks like this, like when Nintendo made Ribbon Road into like a little race track in like a kid's room. Uh, we had that with like Slot Circuit, an old school custom track, and then here we have Frantic Fun Yard. It's all happened in the backyard. There's a sandbox we're gonna get to later. There's a lot of like RC cars zooming around. You saw it on the right there as we went off that ramp. And I remember this one's a pretty long one. I, oh, okay, so that mud, you definitely want to evade. Slightly off-road. The Goombas are gigantic. It's very fitting. Lots of animals, bugs, insects, birds, and backyards in general. Uh, we do have some rolling apples, which is, <laughs> which is a nice touch. It's really creative. And massive mushrooms you've got to evade. 
It's uh, it's funny. It's almost like Funky Kong has shrank. We got miniature Funky Kong, and he's having to live in a world where he's pretty much ant size. You got to be careful here, guys, because I don't see any reason to venture off to the side here. Like you could trick into the wall, maybe. No, I mean there, there's nothing over here for you. I don't even see any like hidden item boxes anywhere. I'm gonna look for a second because we have this massive sandbox. And it's really cool, like, design-wise, but I don't understand the purpose of how... Oh, wait, wait, I think I figured it out. Is there an item box here? Oh, we found it! Okay, there is a secret. I was like, what's the point of having, like, this massive sandbox when it's all completely pointless? You just want to go straight. Like, everything to the right was useless and just uh, almost like a detour. Like, I don't like that sort of design. But at least there was a hidden item box. That was a cool little addition. I knew there was something. I was like, this is just so out of place. So, uh, yeah, anyway... These are mushrooms. We'll start to try to catch up here. There are two different routes at the end. We'll showcase both of them. One is going to be taking the bottom route. We'll just start with that one. I think this is faster. So uh, let's find out. Oh, I just... Oh, tricking there was a mistake. Okay, I don't know if I want to trick there. It seems like that's kind of a... It, it, it's, it's kind of a mistake to trick there, unless you maybe drift trick. If you drift trick, I can see that being a lot better. All right. Spamming my mushrooms, catching up, falling pretty far behind Wario as a staggering lead. Okay. And yeah, I mean, another great track. I've played this one before. I played this one on, I think, Mario Kart Wii Deluxe. So I've, I've played this one at least three times now. You, you get a trick off that, you could probably get an item and then also not even lose too much speed. You get a lot bigger boost if you trick off of the zipper ramps as opposed to just going off them normally. I don't think it's the same way in 8 Deluxe. It's definitely different in this game. Alright, we're back in first. We got two mushrooms now. Beautiful. And we'll burn one right here. Oh, this is cool. There's a shortcut up here. I did a horrible job showcasing the shortcut, but you can definitely cut a lot off. That's a nice addition. And, I mean, these RC cars, you gotta be careful. This is no joke. I mean, they're almost more dangerous than, like, the cars on Trim Ridge or Moonview Highway, to be honest. I'd be very careful. We're gonna take the top right here. It's only a two-lap track. It actually works out quite nice. Get to showcase both routes here. And still gotta watch out for the RC cars. Massive, colorful arrow. It's gonna lead right into the finish line. And that is Frantic Fun Yard. Another really good track. Sandbox section, a little confusing. But for the most part, uh, pretty straightforward, I would say. Ruinated Peaches Castle. This is really cool, you know? Imagine Super Mario 64, but Bowser captured Peach and Peach never returned. The Mushroom Kingdom became deserted. And this is what it looks like 100 years in the future. And it says, Ruinated Peach's Castle by Gabriella. This is really interesting how the author of the track comes up on this level, but it doesn't show up on any of the other levels. On other distributions, it actually shows who made each track. So hopefully CTGP adds that in the future because it also doesn't say who made each track on Mr. Bean's website. You can see which tracks replaced what, but it doesn't tell you the author of each track, which is very surprising. You would think it would. So this one, uh, very dark and grim. However, I can imagine that the mud portion is off-road. This is probably a wall right here, yeah. And we come out here. We have like almost like a light green road texture with dark green off-road, some boost panels, lots of bridges, very reminiscent of what we see on Peach Tracks and kind of like Peach Gardens, I guess. Very smooth track. Most of them are very smooth. I mean, this is cool. This is a really cool turn after the ramp there. Uh, we have some cows, shots of the moving fellas. And I mean, that's the track. You just got some crates off to the side. I guess it's Peach's extra stuff that she left behind after getting captured by Bowser. And then, you know, we enter the castle and it's just, it's just in ruin. I mean, it's a little ominous, but it's quite cool. Even the arrows aren't red. They're like a gray bordered sign with black, just, just a black arrow. There's not too many arrows there at the beginning though. And there's a shortcut that we just passed right there. Looks like. Uh, can we just jet off to the side and cut a bunch? Oh, yeah. Can you go through this part of it? You cannot. <laughs> Gotta test everything out, guys. So, anyway, in the comments below, let me know what your favorite track of today's video. We still have two or three more to go, so we're not done just quite yet. Still some amazing ones. But please, let me know your favorite one of the video. I think we're going to have a lot of different answers. Usually, there's like one or two standout tracks, but because we're going through multiple updates of tracks, I think this is the way I want to make these videos in the future. Because 
This way I can explore the tracks more, I can talk about them without having to be so distracted from the races, and then we're able to appreciate them more that way, and then also, just if I'm doing them every couple updates, it's not going to be like, oh, there's like one or two new tracks to see, and every single other track is just like a slight update, because uh, we're skipping the updates today for the most part. We're just showing the new tracks, because usually the updates are small. They'll be like an uh, item box or a checkpoint change or an uh, ultra shortcut fix or whatever it may be, while when we have brand new tracks, it's always really exciting, because, uh, I mean, just, just, just look at what we're dealing with now. This is, this is Mario Kart Wii 2024, like, this, this is the level of custom tracks that we're getting on a pretty much monthly basis because CTGP generally updates like once a month. So uh, you know, we had a Christmas update, we had one in February, there's probably gonna be another update in March. There's a lot of great tracks coming in the near future. So the next one we have is called Fiery Factory Fading, Fading Frost. So this is one of the craziest ones from what I remember. This custom track is very interesting. I don't remember the last time, if ever, that I played a custom track that has a comma in between the four words. <laughs> Bowser Jr. says no to microplastics. I mean, there's just so many things on these tracks that you've never seen on any other custom track. I was so used to for years seeing the same objects and enemies and textures reused over and over. And it wasn't a bad thing. It was still, there's still a lot of really cool tracks, but I mean, now it's just like, you're seeing things you've never seen before on a regular basis. And it's, it's quite incredible. It's quite impressive. Look at this Bowser turtle shells on top the Goombas. They even have the collars Bowser has around the Goombas. I mean, what more do you want from a trap? This is peak. We got Bowser's logo inside the item boxes. This track is insane. And then look at this. You can go off to the side. There's a stand. There's a, there's a, not a stand. There's a fan, and you can propel off of it and then do a shortcut. And this is, a, I believe, a conveyor belt. Yeah, it looks like it's a conveyor belt. And oh, you got to be careful here. This shifts back and forth. Oh, OK, that part is very sketch. You gotta immediately go into a left corner. So this track is very difficult. It's one of the most difficult ones. Um, beautiful track. I mean, we're changing scenery all the time. It's something as we're seeing quite a bit with these custom tracks. They don't just stay on one type of terrain. They're changing into different themes all the time. And these igloos are about to break, it looks like. And then uh, right here, there's some arrows in the distance. This is a very scary turn. It's very slidey here. And oh, oh, oh. Fell off. I was trying to make a point and then uh, that happened. The, uh, the first time I played this track, I fell off on that corner right there because it's super slidey. So if you trick off that ramp and you're not already drifting, you will die because look how far away those arrows are. They're super far in the distance and it makes things very confusing because you're most likely not going to see that arrow and you're just going to trick into oblivion. So uh, yeah, instead I fell off on a completely sketch and random part of the level. I'm going to take this route. Seems like this is probably faster. Very wide open section here. And I think that conveyor belt, yeah, I think it was turning me the other way. That was very weird. This part's cool. I like this part a lot. I think my favorite part of the level is this part, though. Just the fact you can go off this fan here. That's so cool. I almost fell off, but I'm, you know, having fun exploring right now. And, yeah, I think I'm going pretty slow on this. Yeah, so you got to be really careful with the conveyor belt. And make sure you drift to the left here. Like, I'm drifting to the left, and I'm barely making that corner. I'm drifting to the left super early because I already know what to do. But, yeah, this one's difficult. It's not super straightforward. It's a beautiful track. It has so many cool elements to it. And, I mean, you're always thrown into something every second. There's no dull part of this level. Everything is insane. The igloos turn into trick ramps. Like, that is next level. You could trick here, and you could do a shortcut. Like, look at that. So cool. Such a cool shortcut. Still got one more lap to go. What is going on over here? Just some more construction. Okay. Let's proceed onward. There's an item box on the left. Hidden item box. And... Oh, we got a mushroom. Nice. Maybe we can try a shortcut if we see anything. I'm looking at the mini-map, and I do see something coming up. So we will go for it if we can find it. It's a big if, though. <laughs> I didn't see anything the first two laps. Trick like this. Beautiful. And hang on. So there's something over here. I just don't know where. Like, I'm looking at the mini map. Maybe something over there. I, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm looking at the mini map. There looks like there's a shortcut there. I just don't see it. So we shall proceed onward. We are in some toxic waste sludge, rainbow sludge. I mean, that's pretty cool. 
going off the uh, hexagon snowflakes. And we enter Peon Village here. And now every single igloo has been converted into a trick ramp. Very fascinating. I'm going for shortcut again. Oh, I almost fell off. Okay, we're good, we're good. That was close. This is a difficult one. You're gonna have to practice this one. I don't know how I feel about certain parts of it, but you can't deny the creativity. Definitely saw some things like the, the fan that propels you up in the air using a mushroom pad that we haven't really seen on any other custom tracks, so gotta give credit where credit is due. Weemfy Wonderworld! And it makes the shape of a W, and this just celebrates Weemfy. Such a great idea for a track. The Pokies have little party hats on them, I mean, what more could you want? That's one thing that we're seeing all over the place. We're seeing enemies with a little bit of Razzle Dazzle attached to them. You know, like we had the, the Bowser shells on the Goombas, and it's just becoming a thing that you almost expect with the custom tracks, which we can't complain about. It's, it's a really nice touch. It really adds that extra flair to them. So I uh, love that, absolutely. And this almost has like a similar texture palette to Nightlife Party, although this track is a million times better. This is a beautiful track. Gotta love this white and red barbershop sort of design going on. And is that an apple we're going through on the side? Looks like you could potentially trick and land up top. I don't know if that's a 200cc cut. And there is a shortcut over here, but this is probably off-road. I'm gonna probably die right here. Yeah, had to go for it anyway. At least you guys know where the shortcut is. Looks like you gotta do like a hard left drift there. It would be the way to go. And make sure you hold that drift. So it looks like, uh, I'm not sure if those are supposed to be candy canes or what on the side, but uh, this is the coolest turn of the track. I remember playing it the first time, just how fun that turn was. Just so satisfying. We got some presents. I'm guessing probably mushrooms come out of these or bananas. And yeah, I mean, it's just in the shape of the W. There's lots of off-road shortcuts. There's a massive cannon to start the level, so you can potentially dodge there. Custom tracks in CTGP have done a great job over the last few years of not putting too many cannon tracks. Oh, that was sketch. That used to be a big problem with custom tracks. They had too many mushroom pads and too many cannons, but that's not really a thing anymore. Not nearly as much of an issue as it used to be. This one's very fun. This is one of the most fun ones. And even though it's kind of complicated, it's not too difficult. Like it's, it's visually complicated. There's a lot going on, but it doesn't feel nearly as difficult as the last one. The last one, is a little bit much, but I will say that visually it was one of the most impressive. And oh my gosh, Wiggler on every single one of his body parts, he has a party hat. So, uh, I mean, th this is the party track. Like, <laughs> just, just endless amounts of theming on these tracks. It's gonna be so hard to get a track into CTGP nowadays with just the level of creativity that goes into each one. It's truly spectacular. And also, the track that was removed for this one was uh, Sunset Ridge. And it, I mean, it just shows that used to be the best custom track. That, that literally used to be my favorite custom track like 10 years ago, but it just goes to what I was saying before. And it's really important that some of these old tracks that used to be the best ones in the pack, but are now outdated and old and don't really have that same level of flair that the newer ones have. It's really important those tracks get removed and new tracks take their place because that's what's gonna keep people interested, you know, having all new tracks to play, all high level, you know, top of the line designs. And that's what we've gotten in the last couple updates. So, you know, like I said, I wanna do that like in the future where I combine multiple updates together. So you guys are just hit with so much excitement instead of just being a couple new tracks, just being able to see just pretty much, this is like a dozen new, extremely impressive custom tracks, just one after another. So uh, yeah, look at that ending. <laughs> Awesome cannon design. It's just a beautiful track. There's not much more to say. I really like that one. Spooky Swamp. This one's really cool. You can actually like drive around the buildings and create shortcuts. I'm gonna try to do that. I remember doing it the first time I played this track and being very impressed with what was possible. I'm gonna bag at the beginning, try to get mushrooms so I can pull it off. And guys, this is the end of the video. This is the last track. I hope you enjoyed this. This is a lot different than how I've made these custom track videos in the past, but I think this is a really good format. Oh, does it give you the item that it shows? No, it's just, it's just gonna be trope mushrooms. So if it gives me one mushroom here, no, okay, so there was one mushroom on the item box and it gave it trope mushrooms, okay. Anyway, a rainy track. We don't have too many rainy tracks on, look at this, look at this, you can go around. I don't think there's any purpose to this. Yeah, there's no purpose to this, but it is cool. 
On certain parts of the level, there is purpose, though. So I'm preparing you guys for what's to come. I thought there was a shortcut on the left, and I realized that wasn't the case, and now I'm off the edge, and this is just a terrible display of Spooky Swamp. It's a shame more people don't play CT Worldwide. I think one of the reasons, I think the main reason that people don't play them is because people don't want to play tracks like Mushroom Peaks, these super old, extremely long Kaizo S tracks. I think tracks like that are the biggest problem with CTGP and why not many people are playing CT Worldwide. Because, I mean, look how amazing the new custom tracks are. You'd expect so many people to be playing. And, I mean, like, if these tracks are showing up on a regular basis, then people are going to want to play. But if they go to play CT World Lights, and then they're just thrown into a 14-year-old track that they don't like, and it takes nine minutes of their time with loading screens and result screens, that's just not really a good experience for anyone. Anyway, look at this shortcut right here. Don't go through the building. And... Bam. All right, I seriously have to catch up. I'm very far behind. Let's see if we can make it happen. Pressure is on. Very serious business. Oh, baby Daisy trying to hit me while I'm commentating. Feels like I'm in a CT Worldwide right now with the amount of pressure. Can't lose to Baby Mario on the cheap cheap. This is serious business. Oh, oh, it looks like there's a shortcut over there. I think I found one. Is there a ramp? Yeah, I think there's a ramp over there. I'm gonna try to do that on lap three. There's a big off-road shortcut here, which is amazing. You can even take the bottom route here, which is probably the way to go. There's, yeah, oh yeah, there's boost panels down, down there. I don't know why you'd want to take the top route. It seems a lot slower. I'm gonna, like a trick. I'm gonna try to, uh, the one thing about this track, boost panels, absolutely amazing. I, I just love how they have that glow, that neon glow to them. But a lot of this track feels the same. It, it, it's hard for me to memorize the layout on this one because we kind of are going through the same sort of sections over and over with these uh, these buildings. Um, but I mean, it's not bad. Like the track is still really pretty, and this is a cool shortcut. It's gonna be a great trap spot. Putting a fake item box there will allow people not to do that shortcut. You can break away in first. Love that. And we'll use the mushroom here. Let's try this out. Ooh, let's see. Does this give you any sort of special item? That'd be cool. Nope, a banana. All right, we shall proceed onward. Oh, it is on. Getting wrecked. <laughs> that that's the shortcut on the left. I see. I don't have a mushroom now, but we found another shortcut. And you can see the ramp. There's there's two ramps that connect it together. So uh, we'll use our last mushroom here, and we'll take the bottom route. And oh no, there's mud. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. I was gonna say, why would anyone ever take the top route? Now it makes sense. I'm really glad I showcased that because I was like, I was a little confused. I was like, top route's cooler, but bottom route's faster, and I hate when that happens. But that is not the case. This is interesting too. You're getting a massive trick boost, but you're just landing on a boost panel, so it just kind of doesn't matter. There's something flying up over there. Is that like a fish or something? There's some fish like flying out of the water on that part of the level, almost reminiscent of like Banshee Boardwalk. Very similar, Banshee Boardwalk plus like GBA Luigi Circuit vibes on this one. And we'll go through the house and proceed on. But yeah, lots of circles on the mini map. Track has a little bit of a, kind of like the same thing over and over again, but slightly different. I really like that one. Even though, like I said, it's kind of hard for me to memorize the layout. I'm sure I'd play it a few more times. Wouldn't be a problem. That is it. 12 tracks for your guys' enjoyment. Be sure to comment below what track was your favorite. And let me know if you like this format for going through all of the various custom tracks that CTGP has to offer. I have a tutorial in the description if you'd like to get this mod and play these tracks on the Wii or the Wii U. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Peace.